Hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for episode 98. Now this is a special edition show where I'm launching information to you regarding the new Nissan Area. Uh, not a concept anymore. Right now, uh, as this show is being aired, also is the live stream from Tokyo from Nissan. Uh, giving everybody all the details. So I've had some details for some time and now I'm allowed to release it. First two things I want to say before I get into it. CCS combo charging is now on the area and active cooling. Everybody's been asking for active thermal management from Nissan. Now they have it. Good news. It's a great looking vehicle. Let me get right into it. Now the area is Nissan's first all-electric crossover SUV and it offers an estimated range of approximately 300 miles or 482 kilometers. Now these are preliminary numbers from Nissan and they are estimated range for the long range two wheel drive or single motor model. Now area is based as you can see um, on these pictures and video on the similarly named concept vehicle that was displayed at the 2019 Tokyo Motor Show and of course hinted way back in 2017 under the IMX uh, badging. It's the first production model now from Nissan to represent the new electrified brand identity. And the area also builds, of course, on Nissan's strength as an EV pioneer and innovator, including, of course, their global sales on more than 475,000 Nissan LEAF electric vehicles that have been sold globally uh, for over a decade now. The area is a 100% electric vehicle platform that is new to Nissan, and they've been able to remove fundamental limitations that have allowed their designers to take new approaches to existing components. The area styling represents a significant redefinition of Nissan's design philosophy. This new philosophy is based on what Nissan calls timeless Japanese futurism, and its distinctive Japanese approach is conveyed in a simple yet powerfully modern way. The front of the vehicle has a reimagined grille to denote the EV era and Nissan's redesigned brand logo. Thin LED headlamps constructed with four 20 millimeter mini projectors are what light the vehicle at night. If we continue looking at the design of the area, it is equally striking. It has a steeply raked C pillar, a one piece light blade, of course, in the rear, representing the combination lamps, and it's been engineered to give a blackout effect when parked and a consistent red illumination day or night when in use. Area will be offered with six two-tone exterior paint combinations, each sporting a black roof and three striking full body colors. These pictures and video show the exterior copper and black two-tone color package. Now these advantages that I spoke about provided by the new platform have enabled uh, area to have a spacious cabin. Um, the compact nature of the powertrain components make uh, it possible for Nissan's engineers to install climate control system under the hood where a traditional gasoline engine would be. Of course there isn't one here so it allows the designers to utilize the whole length of the cabin without traditional obstructions such as the transmission tunnel. People I think will be very surprised at the rear seat passenger legroom that's there. And the drivetrain and the generous use of sound absorbing materials result in a quiet ride. Now Nissan is taking a somewhat Tesla approach to their minimalistic instrument panel. It's devoid of a lot of buttons and switches that are found in conventional vehicles, which is of course different for Nissan. The primary climate control functions are integrated into the wooden center dash in the form of capacitive haptic switches, and they offer the same feeling as mechanical switches by vibrating when touched. Tucked under the center of the instrument panel is an innovative center storage box and fold-out tray. The innovative slide-out table design transforms the cabin into a mobile office or on-the-go picnic table. Ah, that's pretty cool. The center console is adjustable as well, and there's a new shifter as you can see, with of course uh, haptic drive mode controls, all with an easy reach for the driver. Now let's get into some of the specifics about the vehicle. Four core models will be offered, including two two-wheel drive variants and two all-wheel drive versions. The key specs from a battery perspective, two battery pack sizes, a 65 kilowatt and a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack, giving 63 usable kilowatt hours usable and 87 usable on the 90 package. If customers opt for the twin electric motor or the all-wheel drive area, 
They can also get the advanced all-wheel control technology E-Force. And the rear suspension includes multi-link system and rear electric motor if equipped as an option. Now, of course, most EVs have highly rigid body structures and the area is no different there. And it has almost a near 50-50 front rear weight distribution. Great for handling. And the area will have the next generation ProPilot Assist Advanced Driver Assistant package. Now, I think a lot of viewers are familiar with ProPilot Assist, which comes in the Leaf and uh, in many other Nissan vehicles now which is a hands-on assistant systems with a single camera and a single radar that provides uh, helps drivers to stay centered in the lane, navigate stop and go uh, traffic, maintain set vehicle speeds, adaptive cruise, distance to the vehicle, and so forth. Well, ProPilot Assist takes it up another notch. It expands on this, and it allows drivers to take their hands off the steering wheel for certain conditions. Um, it provides, supports multi-lane highway driving tasks such as lane changes, passing, and highway exiting. ProPilot Assist 2 uses the navigation system and high-definition 3D map data to detect the roadway type, direction, and speed limits, and can adjust vehicle speed accordingly for a relaxed and enjoyable journey. And Nissan, of course, also equips the area with a standard suite of safety, what they call their Safety Shield 360. It's a six active safety features that includes intelligent emergency braking with pedestrian detection, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert, lane departure warning, high beam assist, and rear intelligent emergency braking. Another new feature for Nissan is updates over the air. Yes, this has something called intelligent integration, which will keep the area up to date automatically. And it also includes Amazon Alexa integration. Now, as you can see by the connectivity and the displays, they feature both a 12.3 inch instrument monitor and a 12.3 inch center display along a single horizon. It's pretty cool. One neat feature about these displays is that information can be swiped between the displays to customize and prioritize the information displayed. And the area will offer a heads up display and it will be one of the largest full color displays in the segment. And as I mentioned, the over the air updates the area it will be Nissan's first model with firmware updates over the air. Uh, the technology will automatically update various software uh, elements inside the vehicle, specifically software that controls the multimedia system, electric and electronic architecture, chassis, climate systems, and EV settings. So additional specs. This is a two row, five passenger vehicle. It will come in a single front wheel drive or a dual all wheel drive configuration. Uh, both with the regular or the e-force enabled systems big big of course change active battery thermal management you hoo I know a lot of you people out there that love Nissan and been waiting for active thermal management while well, it's finally here in the area level 2 charging will be your standard 7.2 kilowatt and the other big change for Nissan is the incorporation of CCS standard charging CCS combo yay a lot of people are going to be excited about that with support up to 130 kilowatts of charging output combined is up to from 160 kilowatts to 290 kilowatts giving torque of 221 foot pounds to 443 pound feet excuse me depending on what you um, what it's equipped with Cargo volume is pretty vast on this, 16.5 cubic feet or 467 liters on the front wheel drive version and 14.6 cubic feet feet on the E-Force version. Wheel size will come with either 19 or 20 inch options. Wow, so I'm pretty stoked about this vehicle as you can see by the pictures and video. It's a nice looking vehicle, really close to the concepts that we've seen and that seems to be a trend. Now availability, there's no pricing yet of course announced, but availability is going to be in Japan from mid next year and then in the North American market following that, probably the fall or or fourth quarter of 2021. Of course, it depends on what happens with Corona and what the world situation is like at that time. Now, let me get some thoughts from Nissan for my good friend, Francois. All right, folks, well, I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking to my old pal. He's a young, good-looking guy, though, but my old, old pal, Francois <laughs> Lefebvre from Nissan Canada. He is the Senior Manager, Corporate Planning and Market Intelligence. Boy, that's a hell of a title. I like that. How are you, sir? Very good. How about you? I'm stoked, man. I'm, you know, this uh, the area reveal here is just awesome. I, I love what I'm seeing. 
Um, I love all the, the specs that you guys have come out with and the facts. And what I wanted to do is just get a couple of minutes of your time. I, I know you've been busy on a lot of calls today um, talking about this and preparing for it. Um, just to give me your sense. I mean, you know, we, we sat, we've had some coffee. We've talked about the electric vehicle landscape on and on. Uh, I know that you couldn't say a lot the last time we spoke in the uh, winter time. <laughs> we went for a, a drive. Uh, what can you tell us about your insights and opinions on this new product? Well, Ken, it's uh, extremely exciting. Uh, the new vehicle is uh, it's finally out, right? We can finally talk mm -hmm. about it. Um, and the, the key point for, for us is, is we're offering a new body style. Uh, and for Canada, always thinking about the Canadian insight for, for us, of course, uh, this new body style is what Canadian want. That, that's, that's where we're going with this, right? Uh, the biggest segment in Canada is small SUVs. Yep. Uh, the fastest growing segment is subcompact SUVs. Uh, so that's, that's where we're at. Um, we're coming out with uh, the area, uh, which is between a cash guy and a rogue in terms of size, but the inside is a lot bigger. Um, so that's, that's, that's key. And it's going to be uh, helping to democratize uh, the EV for, for Canadians and in, in, in North America. So for, for, for me and for, I think Nissan in general, that the new body size is key and it offers uh, available all wheel drive. Once again, uh, we have something called winter here. Um, so th <laughs> therefore I will drive, uh, and our E4 system is uh, is key. Uh, and again, when we're talking body style, where I'm, I'm talking the the, the the size, but also just look at it. It's it's from from the inside and out. It is absolutely stunning. Uh, you can see the new design cues that uh, that we're using for for EVs and for the brand. So that's that's extremely exciting. I think that's the the number one thing that uh, uh, I definitely want to highlight with you. Yeah, you know, it, that is exciting. You're absolutely right. And, you know, coming out with a new platform, a new all electric, you know, in this market segment, in this class segment, I think is great. You know, it's a hot, absolutely. hot segment. I just can't, every show there's an SUV, CUV somewhere on it. <laughs> uh, and it's it's literally around not just North America and Canada, but certainly globally, that segment is, is, is extremely hot. First thing I, I talked about when I started this show is CCS Combo and active thermal management. Got that, got that out right away because I think those are two important facets that a lot of people are looking for in the future of EV technology. Um, you know, the LEAF was groundbreaking, ground setting, set the stage for mass market, but you know, the, the market is shifting, it's changing, it's evolving as we know. Um, great to see those attributes on this vehicle. Yeah, absolutely. So there's, uh, these are, are important points for us uh, and um, it's something that we discussed about a lot in the past. So it's uh, uh, putting it aside moving forward. Uh, and then we jump on something that everybody's talking about since, uh, since the very first leaf that we sold in Canada back in 2011. Range, range, and more range. So the car has... Uh, can go up to 482 kilometers of range. Again, those are estimates. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are not EPA or NRCAN uh, tests. Those are estimates only, but it's extremely um, uh, exciting. And like the LEAF right now, we will offer two batteries. Uh, so for people that don't need the range, and most people don't, it's more psychological more than anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, still offering two batteries uh, is relevant and, and key for our market. So that it's great to, to, to be able to, to offer two batteries to Canadians as well. Yeah, having that choice, it just get, opens up to more marketplace for people that, because uh, obviously the way price points associated with that choice. And as you said, not everybody needs 480 kilometers. And, and we all know that these EPA, these ranges, you know, haven't been EPA tested yet. They need to be certified. And they typically are a bit lower than actual values that you get. You know, we see right off the bat, most EVs are uh, supersede those uh, or surpass those, which is great. Um, yeah, I a know lot, a lot of your listeners can can easily pass the 400 mark with the Nissan Leaf, right? Mm -hmm. And the EPA is uh, uh, 363 and 349, respectively, with the 62 kilowatt. 
So mm-hmm. it's <laughs> so, um, so I, I think uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see uh, the the actual EPA and our CAN uh, numbers. And final questions. I know that it's early for pricing, so I won't get into that. Availability, my <laughs> understanding is uh, is uh, Japan for the mid part of next year and North America after that. Q three, Q four estimates, and and I understand you know with COVID and everything going on. Every show I tell people, like, whatever you hear from timelines, take it with a bit of a grain of salt because things could change. That's just the way the markets are. Um, But obviously, you expect this to be priced competitively in the current marketplace. um, And do you still think, you know, feel pretty positive about those timelines? Yeah, well, for your first question about uh, the competitiveness and and, and the word current marketplace, Mm -hmm. the current marketplace will be completely different next year, right? So it will be very interesting to uh, price that vehicle and and look at that and how how we're going to be able to to launch it in North America um, at a a specific price uh, because the uh overall uh market will be very different uh in in 12 months from now exactly 12 mm-hmm. months from now so it's it's going to be interesting to see with uh other launches and uh our launch uh which will be key for us and and for 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 Canadians uh see if uh, what what will be uh the state at that time uh, and it's the same with with the timeline as well. There's there's a lot of things that that could could change. And of course, like you said, uh, you, we saw a lot of delays uh, out there. We didn't delay anything on our side uh, with COVID, but uh, anything can happen. COVID de- definitely brought a lot of salt to to a lot of plans. So it's uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but right now we're we're uh, we're on time. Uh, and uh, and pricing is 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 extremely important for us, right? Um, to to offer a competitive uh, price to to to, our, to to all customers in Canada. Yeah, that certainly is the key as we continue to hopefully drive down towards cost parity at some point in the next few years or sometime this decade. And uh, uh, so I appreciate that. Very exciting times. Can't wait to actually see one eventually when one shows up here in Canada and uh, get a chance to spin around uh, in a press launch or something like that. Hopefully uh, maybe next summer, who knows? Yeah, well, uh, you know, maybe, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, try our best to invite you so you can uh, check it out as soon as possible. Well, listen, I appreciate your insights and opinion as always, Francois, a genuine pleasure to speak to you again. Congratulations on this launch. I think this is a huge step for Nissan uh, globally um, in the electrification market. I think a lot of people who, who love the product are going to continue with the Nissan line and love this. It looks great. I can't wait to see one as well. Uh, so thank you very much for spending the time with me and uh, all the best. And we'll, we will talk soon. Hopefully we'll be able to grab a coffee again when the dust settles from COVID. Yeah, no, for sure. It's a pleasure. Always a pleasure to, to talk to you, Ken. Well, thanks, Francois. I hope you enjoyed that quick uh, interview from Francois. He's a great guy, very passionate about EVs. I'm very much stoked about Nissan's area. I think they've checked all the boxes now. I hope the pricing is in line, at least with other EVs coming out next year. Uh, You know, it's a little bit bigger than a Rogue and smaller than a Murano. So we'll have to see how that's priced. But I am pretty stoked about it. And I think Nissan is finally entering the next uh, area of their EV evolution and continuing to help the EV revolution by incorporating a lot of the standards that most automobile manufacturers have today, pretty well all of them now that are dealing with electrification. So a big congratulations to Nissan. This is quite the vehicle for them. It's going to help catapult them into the EV marketplace uh, even more as they continue to roll out new platforms and new products moving forward this decade. All right, and that's it for this edition, special edition of the EV Revolution Show, episode 98. Thanks very much for watching as I try to educate minds one tailpipe at a time. As always, everybody that subscribes on um, YouTube, thank you very much for doing that. Much, much appreciated. A, a like, comment. I'd love to hear your comments about what you think about this vehicle. Uh, again, I think Nissan's checking all the boxes, but why don't you tell me? Of course, a humble thanks to everybody on their Patreon uh, website who sponsors me and supports me. Even a dollar a month, folks, will help a lot. 
Uh, again, stay safe. Please, everybody, follow their local public health guidelines. It's important. Let's uh, get through this together and let's get through this safely. So uh, please follow me on Twitter. Here's my Twitter information. And boy, I'm so excited. I've been staying up late to do this uh, show. <laughs> so I hope everybody enjoyed it. And until the next time, please, everybody stay safe. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye.